Hey everybody, Wang the Always Bored, Never Boring. Recently, I posted a video about a forthcoming White Dwarf magazine, and I talked about how Games Workshop are still publishing articles about Warhammer Quest Cursed City. And that got me thinking more about Cursed City. And to be honest, I spend quite a lot of time thinking about Cursed City. I've been thinking about all the different rumours, the different possibilities about what happened, and I've been thinking in particular about Games Workshop's lead time on new products. I've been wondering if the reason for the unceremonious demise of Cursed City isn't perhaps a bit more obvious than it seems. This video is really just a ramble. I don't claim to have any answers, I'm just talking about a game I love, a, a series of games I love, and inviting anybody who watches this to share their own thoughts in the comments below. I'm not sure whether I need to put on or take off my tinfoil hat for this, but here goes. Ultimately, there are lots of things we don't know about how Games Workshop works, but there are some things we do know. One, it takes years for a new game to get from concept to retail. Two, 40k is more popular than Age of Sigmar. Three, Games Workshop really likes money and hates sitting on stock. So we can probably assume that when Blackstone Fortress came out, Cursed City was at least in the early stages of development. At the very least, they would have been working on the miniatures, even if they hadn't settled on the rules or campaign structure, and they would have been thinking it was a strong way to introduce the new vampire line that was in the works at the time, much like how Silver Tower served as an introduction for the new Siege miniatures. They were clearly banking on Blackstone Fortress being popular, as they had a narrative planned out and definitely knew there would be at least two big box expansions, even if some of the smaller expansions weren't necessarily planned. Abominable Intellect and No Respite in particular feel like last minute additions to the range. Now, I believe Blackstone Fortress did pretty well, but the first two expansions hung around for quite some time. I think it took a while for the game to really build up steam, and at first perhaps it seemed like it was going to be a moderate seller. During that time, development would have been continuing on Cursed City, with the idea of following the same format with expansions. Then, at some point, Blackstone Fortress expansions started to sell at speed. The card packs flew off the shelf, and no respite was a blink in your miss it offering. Even the final expansion, with a whopping £65 price tag, didn't hang around for too long, in the UK at least. Perhaps they produced later expansions in smaller numbers because the early expansions didn't sell as well as they thought, or because of the law of diminishing returns, or perhaps it was because interest in the game kept increasing. I think, whether the rapidly selling expansions is a sign of high interest, or small print runs due to a lack of interest, the outcome is the same. A rethink of Cursed City's design. But of course, by that time Cursed City was well into development, and some components may even have been printed up. We know the original plan for Cursed City was an expanding story with expansions, because the rules talk about the campaign in the box being the first adventure. Furthermore, the heroes can go to level 5, but they only need to get to level 4 to complete the campaign in the box, suggesting more adventures to follow. These little glimpses of what might have been, I say might have been assuming of course we don't ever see a Cursed City expansion, could well exist because it was simply too late in the day to remove them. And then, of course, there is the secret envelope. In Blackstone Fortress, the envelopes contain prizes, special rewards you can carry forwards to your next adventure. I suspect that was the intention for Cursed City, but that isn't what they did. I'm going to talk now about the contents of the secret envelope for Cursed City, so this is your spoiler warning. I will put a timestamp on the screen here, and also in the video description, and that timestamp will indicate the point at which the spoilers end and I get to my final summary. So this is your chance to click off or click ahead, because the spoilers start now. The secret envelope in Cursed City doesn't contain a prize for winning the campaign. It contains a small amount of story text, and then rules for continuing playing the game up to level 5, and that's it. Now perhaps that was always the intention, and I admit, at first I thought it was an obvious lead-in to future adventures thanks to a cliffhanger, albeit a cliffhanger Games Workshop promptly spoiled and resolved about a week later when they showed certain vampire characters. So yeah. Maybe it was always the plan, but perhaps, just perhaps, they had just enough time to pull whatever was going to go into the envelope, and then they replaced it with a hastily thrown together method of playing the game up to the highest level that was already printed on other game components and in the rules, because they knew at that stage there wasn't going to be an expansion after all. In that regard, 
it feels a little bit like Joss Whedon making Serenity to close out the story of Firefly, a truncated and constricted method to round out and complete a story that ended before its time. Following that, they made their single print run of what was now being considered a limited game, creating what they believed would be enough based on the sales of Blackstone Fortress and the fact Age of Sigma generally doesn't sell quite so well. And the rest is history. They released the game, planned on it selling out over the course of three or four months, and planned a series of articles in White Dwarf to run for the first few months of release to encourage sales if they should start to flag. But what does that mean for the future of Warhammer Quest? Well, let's assume Blackstone sales really started to pick up. Games Workshop perhaps decided that they didn't want to block up the Warhammer Quest product range for two years with Cursed City, when the demand for Blackstone suggested they would be better off immediately starting work on a new 40k quest. So, Cursed City becomes a standalone title, and a year later, we get another 40k series instead. Alternatively, let's assume Blackstone sales weren't as good as Games Workshop wanted or expected. Based on those sales and the fact Age of Sigma sales would potentially be lower, they ditched the idea of Cursed City as a series, making it a standalone game instead that they were confident they would sell out and make back their money on. But, at the same time, they lost their faith in the series completely and decided it might be time to break from Warhammer Quest completely, at least for now. Well, we can hope that's not the case, or hope that the unexpected sales of Cursed City revived their interest. Personally, I'm more inclined to believe that Blackstone did very well, too well to ignore. After all, it did well enough for them to print regular content for it in White Dwarf for well over a year, to produce an annual, and to release cards like Abominable Intellect, which really felt like they were never originally planned as part of the product line. And if Blackstone did do well, maybe Cursed City was just a victim, buried alive, staked through the heart, and left for dead to clear the way for something else. Who knows? None of this is based on facts. These are just the thoughts that buzz around my brain whenever I think of Cursed City. I was actually in two minds about whether to even post this video. It's not like these conversations haven't been hashed to death already, and they probably didn't need to be dragged out of the gloom to smolder in the sun for a bit longer. But there we have it. Let me know what you think in the comments, because that's it from me for now. Thank you so much for listening. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I'll see you all again very soon. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye.